Hey Pit Monsters, what is up? Today I'm going to be grilling my first python. So this is our python. I got it from an online store and it looks like what you're expecting a python or snake meat to look like. White, a lot of people say it actually tastes like chicken. Well, the meat, it does look like chicken. The smell is a bit, bit weird and, and not in a good way. It's, it doesn't smell like chicken. It really has a strong pungent smell. It's smelling. Are you sure? Oh. <laughs> That's not good. If it tastes like it smells, normally I would say like, you can really tell what it tastes like. So that's why I always smell my meat up front. The way if you smell it, you already know what it's going to taste like because what you're smelling are like small particles of that meat actually going into your nose and your nose tasting these particles. So, so I, get, I have pieces of snake in my nose right now. That's, that's, what, that's what it is. Don't make it, make it more terrible. It's, it's like that. You have raw snake in your nose. Okay. I think we're better gonna be thinking about how we're going to approach this. I heard snake was really tough to eat. So if you grill it, it's gonna be tough. But as it is my first time, it's kind of like an experimental thing. I don't know what to do with it. I've never done this before. Um, of course, I know which options we have. If you have a tough cut of meat, normally you would cook it for a long time to make it tender. But for a cut of meat to cook for a long time, it has to have fat in it to not turn dry and snake is very, very lean. So what we're going to do is we're going to grill it first, see what it tastes like. So we have kind of like a test. So what we're going to do is we're going to grill it up, season it a little bit and taste it first. So we know how to mix and match with different flavors. And then we're going to decide what we're going to be cooking it like. This python fill it does really look like snake. You can see the scales on top and the bottom part has like a, a silver skin. Today we're going to be grilling on a Napoleon Rogue. We're going to put on two burners and we're going to sear our snake to give it that my yard effect. We're going to let the barbecue come up to temperature and in the meantime we'll put some oil, salt and pepper on our snake. I'm only going to be seasoning this on one side because our snake fillet is so thin it doesn't need that much of seasoning. We're going to place our snake over direct heat and we're looking for that Maillard effect. We also want to cook our snake all the way through. We got the bit of Maillard effect on the bottom and that's what we're looking for. You can see that there's a lot of tension in the meat. It's curling up while it's on the grill. I don't know, but it, it looks, it's, it's pretty much cooked all the way through and that's what the instructions on the, on, the, on the package said, cook it all the way through. So I'm taking it off right now. I'm just gonna see what it tastes like. Oh, by the way, use heat resistant gloves. Don't be like me and burn your hands so many times that you can't feel anything anymore. We are going to try this snake and uh, see what it tastes like, if it's edible like this or if it's too tough or if, if there's fat rendering out there, what the flavor is like. We're gonna find out right now. You. Me? You said we. Yes, you we. To you too. You always taste the good things. When you think it's good, you also have to taste the things that you okay, might think. Okay. Man up. Come on. I'll just I'll just start with a small side cut. Look at this. No, I'm not going to taste it. <laughs> Can we time lapse this? Then maybe we speed it up a little bit? No, we need the 10 minute video. <laughs> I'm still chewing. I'm trying to swallow. <laughs> but it's not. But I'm just laughing because you still have to try it. <laughs> I'm gonna cut you a small piece, otherwise we're gonna be it's afraid. It's bigger than yours. Ah, it's not bigger than mine. <laughs> try it. <laughs> it's like eating pork skin. Raw pork skin, it's so tough. If I look at it, I think there's more fat in there than I realized. So it could be smoked for a long period of time, but just being so thin, you would have to make like a big package out of it. So I'm thinking that's not the great way to go, but I come up, came up with a plan where you have the moisture and at the same time you cook it for a longer time. We're gonna make like a snake soup out of this. So we're gonna work on that right now 
and uh, see if that works better, if we can get the flavors to blend because it has like the, uh, like a delicate, uh, wild, gamey flavor. So I think a soup is gonna work really well to brighten it up with fresh ingredients and then I think it's gonna be a good soup. It's gonna be tasty and people are going to want to eat it. Seriously, this is not good. <laughs> this is horrible. I'm going to start off with the other piece of python that I have left over. I'm not going to put oil in it, I'm just going to pat it dry, put a little bit of salt and pepper on it, and then we're going to smoke it on the grill. I will put a burning log from the stove on the other side. It will stop burning and will start smoking. This is the quickest way to get some smoke on our snake. While our snake is smoking, we're going to prepare the basis for our soup. I got my pan on the grill, it's getting up to temperature, the water is almost boiling. We're going to cut our vegetables and then start building up our soup. We'll start off by slicing fine garlic and put it in the boiling water. Next we'll add one stalk of lemongrass, slice fine some ginger and add it to the pan as well. Two parts of lime. Our snake has picked up enough smoke. You can see it from the white turning to a little bit of yellow, almost light brown. That's gonna provide us with enough flavor, so we're going to add it to our pan of water. Now we're going to let this simmer for around two hours. See if the snake is going to fall apart because we want it really, really tender. We're going to wait for that moment and then we're going to add more vegetables to it. Maybe a cube of stock and then it should have the most delicious snake soup you ever had. Uh, how, how long has it been? Two hours? Let's check on our chicken, see if it's... Hey, chicken. Why did I say chicken? <laughs> Let's get it out of the pan. The smell's gone. That heavy, heavy gamey smell, it's gone. Let's see if it's tendering up already. Oh yeah. You see, it's becoming tender now. Before, you couldn't shred it at all. Now it's just falling apart in my hands. Now we're just going to shred this up, turn it into smaller pieces. I will put it back into the pan and finish our soup. Wait, what? You know what it tastes like now? A mix between crab and chicken. We'll put the snake back in the pan and start slicing up our carrots. Slice up some spring onion, slicing up some shiitake, and now the healthy stuff, some nice chilies and some fresh parsley to finish it off. We'll put all of our vegetables in the pan and bring it up to flavor with some salt and pepper. We've been cooking our snake soup for another half hour. Now we're going to find out what it tastes like. Bit spicy. <laughs> you can easily do it with one chili, but I do like the spiciness. I could use a little bit more salt and a little bit more pepper, so we'll add that. Our smoked snake soup really smells amazing. And it's definitely done. We're just gonna get rid of these big chunks of lemongrass that are in there and lime because we're unable to eat it, but it was just there for flavor. I'm just gonna pick those out. Now, this is the finished result. We're gonna try it again, see if it turned into a really enjoyable recipe. <clears throat> it is hard to say. <laughs> I was waiting for that. I was, yeah, I was waiting for that to go away because you know, you feel it's there. It's like biting into the back of my throat, right on the top of my throat. I was waiting for it to go away. It was my first words like, bam. But besides of the spiciness, this is a really good soup and it really turned into something which I didn't expect when I tasted the snake. I thought, how am I going to solve this problem? Because I considered it to be a problem. The flavor of the snake was not something that you want to find back in the dish. But by cooking the snake and letting it um, become part of a stock, it really opened up. Uh, the flavors became different and if you want to name this in flavor, there's a mix between it, between 
something that you could call like light as chicken soup and at the same time there's a little bit of crab flavor in there but now Marson's gotta try a spoon of the healthiest thing ever alive definitely spicy those are rabbit peppers they're a little bit more spicy than uh, the chili peppers just a little bit more <laughs> But then you have to question yourself, is it worth it? I think if, uh, if you're going to ask me would I ever go looking for a snake to purposely be cooking it again and put it in a soup, no, no. I think it, for the wow factor that people are amazed at eating snake, I think that's, uh, that is value in itself, it's a bit of entertainment. But flavor wise and texture wise, it's not really adding anything. It's not bringing anything to the table. Now to make this dish into a lunch, because we haven't eaten yet, I'm gonna add noodles to it. I'm gonna let the noodles cook in this soup so that it will absorb the flavors and we'll have the best tasting noodle soup we had all week. Yeah, get some more everything, a little bit of carrot, a little bit of snake, a little bit of noodles. Mm. It's not that hot anymore. It's really tasty. Really good. If you're doing everything that you already know, you're never gonna learn something new. And to me, this was a learning experience. It was fun, the recipe in the end turned out great. So, nothing ventured, nothing gained. And in this sense, we gained something. I learned how to make a great snake soup. And I also liked adding a little bit of the Asian flavors where we put lime inside of soup. And the flavors that that brings to a soup is so vibrant, it's so, so really cool. I'm gonna do it again. I hope you guys enjoyed this experiment and let me know what you're thinking down below in the comments and don't forget to smash that like button. See you guys next time. I forgot almost to uh, thank the patrons and the YouTube members. Big thank you, of course. See you guys next time. Until then, eat smakelijk and keep on grilling. <laughs>